Hello, and just when you thought that I was going to be talking to you about cookies and cream or cookies and milk, I'm gonna be talking to you about cookies and spyware, okay? So it depends on the kind of cookie. So uh, you probably have heard about cookies and you probably have heard about spyware. So today we're gonna to take a little bit more of an in-depth look to those two concepts, okay? So let's get started. And those cookies look good. And what are cookies? Not the ones that you're looking at, but the software cookies. Well, they are small text files, and that's what it is, a text file, which means it's only letters and numbers. And those files are stored in your hard disk, okay? Now, how do, how do those cookies get there, okay? And they actually come from websites that you have visited, okay? So, you may um, probably, well, most people that I know just automatically accept cookies, mostly because as we spoke in our last session, your last session with me, you know, it's convenient to have cookies because when you use cookies, then uh, everything is personalized. You kind of have whatever you need right there at your fingertips and you don't have to kind of redo it or look for it again, okay? So the cookie, cookies are actually put right in there for you in your drive from a the website that you visited. But actually sometimes it's not even the exact website that you visited, but something a little bit different, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But in any way, you know that they are originating from your browsing, okay? So who actually uses these files? Let's take a look at some of the, the guilty parties. So first of all, we have all these people, okay? And probably you already use at least one of them, okay? So be careful because cookies are deposited by any of those companies and many more, you know, just to track what you're doing. For example, in Amazon, they use cookies so that they can customize your experience. Ba uh, in basically what it is is that if you're looking for a book that you like, you know, let's say you like William Shakespeare, okay? So you like to read from him and you bought a couple of books. Then next time that you log into Amazon, they customize your experience by recommending books, other books from William Shakespeare, as well as other authors that have a similar style, okay? So that's how they make their money because they are very convenient. They, they sell you that convenience of saying, well, I don't have to look for it. And as a matter of fact, whenever I go to Amazon, there is an, uh, my Blanca store or something like that that it's called that I go to because you know they already know exactly what I'm thinking before I even think about it. But what they are doing is, is using cookies and to a certain extent, if you think about it, they are invading your privacy, okay? So be careful with what you put out there and be careful with cookies. So let's take a look at the kinds of cookies there are. So we have first party cookies, okay? And then we have third party cookies. And with this, I am not talking about cookies that you eat at a party, okay? So the first party cookies are the cookies that get deposited into your hard drive and those cookies come directly from the website that you're visiting, okay? For example, if you're in amazon.com, those cookies come exactly from Amazon and no one else. However, third-party cookies are cookies that are deposited into your hard drive, but they don't come from the, the website that you're visiting, but from a website that is associated with the website that you are visiting, okay? So it's all the people that actually may need to gather certain information, probably and in some instances, just to help the website that you're visiting work better for you or to be better customized, okay? But nevertheless, there is, that's the difference. So whenever you are dealing with cookies and you're se getting your settings up, you can say that you may actually only accept first party cookies, or you may say that any cookies are okay. Okay, so you have, you have the power to decide. However, there is something that it's not mentioned in my presentation, and those are called flash cookies. Flash cookies, those are different, they are larger, and they cannot be prevented. In here, these regular cookies, you can say, hey, you know, I don't want cookies, or I want some, but not the others. Well, with Flash cookies, that's not the case. They are all right there. So Flash is always, you know, opening um, security issues. And we have to, if you are, uh, you love 
to use Flash, then the only thing that I can absolutely recommend is that always keep your updates up to date. Okay, so at least even if you're getting those kind of cookies, you're not compromising your information. Okay, let's continue. So if you want to set up your Windows privacy, there is many ways of, you know, of saying which cookies you want, you know, how do you're going to be storing your passwords if you want to store any passwords. And at, as you can see in the right hand side, you know, in the right uh, window, there is a setting, you know, that you can move the, the dial up or down, you know, the slide bar, and you can say how much privacy, if you want a lot more privacy or a little bit less. Now that is when you are actually using the network or when you're browsing, you know, using Windows, okay? Now, most people, st still most people use Windows, okay? And, but um, we know uh, that one of the most unsafe browsers is Internet Explorer. So I will recommend that you plain and simply don't use that browser, okay? I know many people just use it because they, it, it's convenient. It's already installed for you in Windows when you buy a Windows computer, but nevertheless, it's not the best thing you can do. If you go on and do a little bit of research, you're gonna find that a lot of security issues are constantly happening when you are using Internet Explorer. So switch to another browser. If you are a UH student, if you work you know, at, at Leeward student, then I totally recommend that you use Firefox because that's the one that actually works the best with Laulima, which is our uh, content manager, right, for, for educations, education. So it is best if you use that one. Many of my students use uh, Explorer at the beginning and then they run into issues. They try to submit a quiz or something and it doesn't work well. So please stay away from Internet Explorer. I tell you for your own good. So download Firefox. So let's take a look at what Firefox can do for us. And what I mean by this is what can we prevent or what can we do? Well, in here in the left side, you're gonna, it's gonna allow you for some privacy. This is in the settings for Firefox, where it will allow you to remember the history of what you have browsed for or, or no. Okay, so you can, you can do settings, you can remember history or never remember it, or you just use a particular range of time. Now, in the right, it asks you, you know, if you want to clear any history, you know, for the last hour. Let's say you did something that you don't want anybody else to know because you're researching to buy a surprise present for your spouse, for example. Then you get rid of that the history in there, right? And at the bottom, as you can see, I, those are pictures that I took from my own computer. At the bottom, you have uh, the cookies that I have. So I can look for a particular cookie. I can remove a particular cookie or I can remove all the cookies that are in there. However, and I want to tell you, is these are cookies that were that are regular cookies. Keep in mind that if you're dealing with flash cookies, you're not going to see them in there. Okay, so those are a little bit more sneaky. So let's take a look at yet another of the browsers. You may be browsing with with Safari, which is good. You know, it's it's again not the best friend of Laulimas. So again, I will prefer if you use Firefox. And in here, you can all also go ahead and change some things, you know, uh, remove cookies, you know, and uh, look at, uh, to see if you actually want uh, to be tracked, you know, with location services. And to the right, Safari actually offers you a private browsing option, which allows you to sort of go uh, incognito, okay? So let's take a look after Safari, let's take a look at Chrome. Okay, so here is another uh, Google's own browser, okay, which allows you to also, you know, uh, check for browsing history, download history, cookies, and everything, and it, it allows you to change and delete some information that you may have left behind. However, I want to tell you that if you are committing a crime and you're like, oh, let me just erase all that stuff and people are not going to, the police is not going to catch me, think again, okay? That's why we offer a class in forensics right here at Leeward Community College that will allow us to still, even if you do that, and if you erase your whole hard drive, we can still get the evidence, you know, to be used in court. So either if, you want, if you're a bad guy, at least you're prevented right now that no matter what you do, we're going to find it, okay? And if you're a good guy, maybe you actually want to study that and take the forensics, 
forensic scores with us and actually help us to catch some bad guys, okay? So we talk about cookies and privacy, you know, to a certain extent. So now let's talk about spyware. So what is spyware? It looks very suspicious to me. It's software designed to secretly, an emphasis on secretly, record and report your activities over the internet. Go figure that. They record and report Okay, so whatever you're doing is being sent. And here is an example of it, okay? We have monitoring software, and the most famous is the keystroke loggers. So what do they do? Well, whatever you type is sent to someone, anything. And that means passwords, everything you click, everything is sent in a text file, and they know exactly what you have done. So be careful, okay? This slows your computer a little bit, so if it's a little slow, be suspicious, okay? Let's continue. Another thing that we have is bed, <laughs> bed bugs, <laughs> web bugs. Oh, okay, well, this is a little object in a web page or an email, okay? And you cannot see it, but it can check if you have access certain content, okay? So how would people use web bugs for? Well, they can use it for tracking your email. How invasive is that, huh? They can tag the pages that you visit to, for web analytics, basically to know what your habits are. And another names for web bugs are web beacon, tracking bug, and page tag. So these things we don't see but yet they are there. So if you are okay, I strongly suggest that you don't get images in your email and that you use plain text email. That will get rid of quite a bit of those, okay? Take care of yourself, watch out what you're doing and beware of spyware. See you around.